When it comes to scale, there isn't a franchise that better screws it up than the Transformers. Whether it is F-15 jet Decepticons depicted as the same size as sports car Autobots, Hey, I get the feeling our jet judo needs a little more work. Oh, what makes you say that? Or when both a space shuttle and a jeep end up as limbs to a combiner, scale can be all over the place. There are even instances when scale is inconsistent with the same character, whether it is in various appearances in the comics, to different scenes in the same episode. However, nothing is more complicated to explore when it comes to Transformers in scale than this. I'd like to thank my patrons and my channel members for your continued support. Consider becoming one, or purchase some merch such as my Kickin' It Old School t-shirt today. As many are aware, Transformers came from various toy lines, with a majority coming from Takara's Diaclone and Microchange. While Diaclone was made up of mostly cars, trucks, and planes that were piloted mechs, Microchange, as a subline of Micromen, consisted of robots that transformed into handheld items such as a micro cassette recorder, a microscope, and even toy handguns. The mini cars were purposely super deformed to match Takara's Choro Q line, known to Western audiences as Penny Racers. A whole different breed of racers, each sold separately. When these were brought over to the Transformers toy line, how they interacted with one another became quite an issue. However, the creators of the cartoon and comic chose to make all of the characters in scale with each other in relation to their toys. For example, Hound is much taller than Cliffjumper in robot mode, just as their toys are. In vehicle mode, again, Hound is a much larger Jeep in comparison to Cliffjumper in car mode. In real life, a Jeep J59 would probably be closer in size to the Porsche 924 Turbo, regardless of how they are depicted in fiction. Later Minibots also transformed into vehicles that should be much larger in size. For example, Powerglide was close in size in both modes to Bumblebee, who transforms into a Volkswagen Beetle. Yet Powerglide's alt mode is the much larger A10 Thunderbolt 2. Even further out of scale, the Autobot cars such as Prowl, Ironhide, or Jazz are shown to be close in height in robot mode to Decepticons like Starscream. In real life, their car modes would be tiny by comparison. Real F-15 jets measure in at 64 feet in length, while a Porsche 935 is only 15 feet. Comparing the size of Optimus Prime's truck cab, his robot mode is relative to his transformation since it is comprised of the cab stacked on top of the rear axles. While this works out fine for the Autobot cars, especially since Optimus Prime leads them, the Decepticon jets would have to tower over them all. Scale becomes even more of an issue with combiners. For example, the Combaticons are all military vehicles except for Blastoff, who transforms into a space shuttle. By comparison, a space shuttle would make the rest of the team look tiny, especially next to Swindle. However, in robot mode, Blastoff is the same size as his teammates. In addition to transforming into the arm of Bruticus, he can also transport Decepticons in shuttle mode. No other scaling to their alt modes is more head-scratching than those that came from the Microchange toy line. Megatron and Soundwave are prime examples of this, Megatron being the same height as Optimus Prime, while Soundwave is slightly smaller since he isn't the leader. However, their alt modes, a Walther P-38 and a Micro Cassette Recorder respectively, change in size to reflect their real-life modes. Megatron could even change his size so that other Decepticons could use him, or could be small enough for a human to use. Size changing was not limited to them. Perceptor would shrink down to transform into a microscope. Reflector was comprised of three individual robots that transformed into one camera for spying purposes. Let's find out. <laughs> Any Transformer with an alt mode of a motorcycle, such as the Protectobot Groove, would have a normal size robot mode. It was also not limited to their alt modes either. Combiners are sometimes depicted several times larger combined when they are individual bots. Devastator could tower over other Transformers, sometimes even holding Optimus Prime like he is a toy. Some enlarging is especially seen with transport characters, Skyfire, Omega Supreme, and Astrotrain were all seen to massively change scale to be able to carry many other Transformers inside them. 
Most notably, Omega Supreme's arms transform into his shuttle, and the rest of his body transforms into a base. When he lands at his destination, the rest of his base is there waiting for him. This could be explained with the subspace storage pocket. Triple changers present an even larger problem. Astro Train not only changes in size to carry other Transformers, but he has two alt modes that he can transform into, with passengers aboard. Even Devastator can combine inside of him. The Autobot Broadside transforms into an aircraft carrier, yet then transforms into a very large space travel capable jet. The largest issue with scale comes in the form of city bots, known to some as Titans. Metroplex, Trypticon, Fortress Maximus, and Scorponok all become cities or battle fortresses for the Autobots and Decepticons. However, their robot modes, while hard to imagine how massive they actually are, are not seen to be as big as the bases they transform into, depending on continuity. In Transformers Master Force, the Autobot Pretenders are disguised as regular-sized humans. They can then call upon battle armor and change into full-size Cybertronians. The Decepticons, however, would remain close to their Cybertronian size since their shells were monsters. In the Marvel comics, Pretenders simply kept their size, but interacted with human-like worlds where the inhabitants were the same size as Transformers. All of this size changing begs the question, how does this work? Sure, one must suspend disbelief, and even Joe Bacall stated that the world of the Transformers was much more than you think. We came up with the line, more than meets the eye, because you think it's a robot, but it's really a car. You think it's a robot, it's really a plane or a weapon. But like Optimus Prime's trailer, or the plot holes in the Constructicon's origins, fans and now even official sources have tried to come up with solutions to this. Since the subspace storage pocket became an official term after fans were using it for years, the idea that the missing parts and accessories went somewhere became an accepted piece of Transformers lore. With actual changing of size for the transformation, fans have used the term mass shifting. However, official terminology has been different for various Transformers series. In the Marvel comics, the Decepticons used the wonders of their technology to allow them to transform into weapons of unprecedented power. This not only allowed them to be an army of destruction, but also gave them an advantage in infiltration as robots in disguise. Of course, the Autobots were able to develop this technology for themselves as well. In the Dreamwave comics, the first explanation was called parts compression. Transformers used for transportation, like Astro Trainer Broadside, can compress their extra parts in robot mode. But for vehicle mode, although they could be used for transport, become less armored versions of themselves. The second was called mass conversion. Transformers such as Soundwave have the innate ability to not only transform, but can alter their entire molecular structure to change size. This was done without even thinking about it, making it just a natural ability for these Transformers in particular. In the IDW comics, Megatron used the mass displacement sequence, which would discharge large amounts of energy in order for him to be able to alter his size to become a powerful weapon that humans could use. The discharge was so intense that Megatron would have to tell the others to stand back that they would not be injured from him transforming. Because of the amount of Energon needed to do this, not many Transformers would employ this, as it would drain the Autobot or Decepticon of power. This became easier for Megatron to do after the discovery of Or-13, a super powerful version of Energon on Earth. This was also used to explain how the Constructicons, and other combiners for that matter, would become massive when they merged together. Outside of G1-related media, the relative use of scale and size changing has been just as common in various Transformers series. In Beast Wars, the Maximals and Predacons were about the same size in robot mode, around 5 to 8 feet tall. When they convert to Beast modes, they do not change in size. Instead, they are close in size to their actual Beast counterparts, for the most part. Okay, you're gonna jump Guzzlers. How dare they! While Rhinox and Cheetor are the same size as a real Rhino and Cheetah respectively, Tarantulas, Waspinator, and Rattrap were massively larger than the actual animals they become. By comparison, Megatron is rather small for a T-Rex. So, we are now face to face. 
Optimus Prime. This is because the animal modes they use were not meant for disguise, but for protection against the large amounts of Energon on the planet. The most bizarre cases of size changing occurred during the Unicron trilogy. With Unicron's revival in Energon, Optimus Prime combined with Omega Supreme were supercharged with the Energon in Cybertron's core to face off against this threat. Galvatron also gained the power of Super Energon deep within Cybertron, becoming a planet-sized giant that Optimus Supreme also had to face. In Transformers Cybertron, Starscream gained the power of the Omega Lock to massively enlarge the treacherous Decepticon. The reign of Starscream will be a reign of terror! Fortunately, Primus himself was able to put Starscream in his place. In Transformers Animated, Prowl shrunk down from robot mode into motorcycle mode and sometimes used a hologram for a driver. This would be the same for RC in Transformers Prime. Bulkhead's SUV vehicle mode expanded quite a bit whenever he transformed into robot mode. Predaking's massive dragon mode was a force to be reckoned with, but in robot mode, he was only slightly taller than Megatron. In almost all Transformers series, this size changing seems to be activated by an organ known as the Transforming Cog, or TCOG for short. Now, a TCOG isn't technology, it is biology. This would mean that the use of any mass shifting needs to be an innate ability that only certain Transformers can grow or shrink in relation to their various modes. Without it, a Transformer could be left in alt mode, such as Metroplex and the Ultimate Weapon, or in robot mode as seen in Transformers Prime. Uh, my peacock. However, the makers of the live-action films initially tried to make all Transformers in scale to the vehicles that they transform into. As such, Bumblebee stood taller than Jazz, since a Chevy Camaro is larger than a Pontiac Solstice. We couldn't save him. This didn't pose a problem for the Transformers until they showed the AllSpark. Yep, a discussion for another day. This was also seen with the staff of Merlin in The Last Knight. In Transformers Age of Extinction, Optimus Prime's robot mode remained the same size, but he clearly had to do some size changing in order to become the G1-style truck he disguised himself as at first. Likewise, Lockdown's car mode is much smaller than Optimus Prime's truck mode, despite how tall they stand next to each other. The film tried to explain that Transformers were made of what was dubbed as Transformium, a programmable metal that allowed Transformers to change their alt modes like dirty underwear. In RescueBot's Academy, Laserbeak was found stuck in cassette mode by the RescueBot cadets. Perceptor stated that, Thanks to molecular compression, certain Cybertronians can become objects much smaller than their bot mode would seem to allow. This provides a quasi-scientific explanation as to how Cybertronians can change their size. It also provides limits to this since not every Transformer is capable of extreme alterations to their size when they transform. Throughout all these examples, Hasbro has in recent years tried to unify the scale of characters with a lineup of toys in robot mode, with exceptions of course being in Legends class, now known as Core class. This is true in both their cinematic lineup of figures known as Studio Series, and with Generations beginning with the War for Cybertron trilogy and continuing with their current legacy toy line. As seen in the Netflix animated series, this meant that when the Beast Wars characters interacted with Generation 1 characters, they ended up standing the same height relative to their toys. While there is no one term to officially name how Transformers can alter their size when transforming, the generally accepted term is mass shifting. Unlike the subspace storage pocket, the extreme cases of size altering has its limits because the amount of energy required. While some fans may or may not agree with the terminology, it's easy enough to accept since the Transformers are an alien race that is more than meets the eye. No matter how many times I see it, it's always outrageous. <laughs> but what do you think? How do you view the various use of scale and size changing in Transformers? And what term do you use when talking about how Transformers change in size as they transform? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you like this video, be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. I have many more Transformers videos like this coming soon, so stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one.
Thanks for transforming.